welcome to Movie Review Mom. Thanks for subscribing. And if you haven't already, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. My job is to give you the heads up on movies so that you know what the content is so that you can make the best decision for you. Now, you may notice that I'm facing this way kind of strangely. <laughs> I'm going to be facing this way so you don't see this side of my face. My husband's best friend died of skin cancer. So today I went to the dermatologist and they checked me and sprayed junk on me in spots. And so it looks pretty bad. I look like I'm a leopard or something with spots. So I hope, hopefully if I sit far enough back, you won't tell. But anyway, I'm excited to tell you about this movie because I've had several people request this review. They kept asking me, have you seen this movie? What do you think? What do you think? So I finally watched it. Uh, the movie I'm talking about is Scoob. It's currently available on digital streaming platforms like Amazon Prime, iTunes, HBO, and I've got even a link where you can find it on um, Amazon real quickly. So be sure and look down in the description below. The movie is rated PG. It's an hour and 33 minutes. And the movie review mom grade, I'm giving it is an A, and I'll tell you why. I try to save my review or score for the very end, but I just couldn't help myself, I have to tell you right now. So in a quick nutshell, it's directed by Tony Cervoni, and it's a colorful whodunit. It gives us a glimpse into the life of our favorite crime-solving dog and his human partner, Shaggy, of course, Scooby-Doo. And when uh, what we get to see is when they were younger and when they met, and also when they met up with the rest of their team. So I began watching this fun franchise when I was just a little girl. And what's fun is that there are some shot by shot remakes of that older version of Scooby Dooby Doo, where are you? You know? Um, and so I, I, it's very nostalgic and it's a lot of fun. But there's also an ending scene that is a screen shot by shot take of that same thing. So if you're my age, you're going to probably get a kick out of it. I actually remember finally being old enough to realize that all of the TV episodes were very formulaic and predictable. <laughs> I'd been watching it, I don't know, for a year as a little girl, I don't know how long. And then finally I was like, oh wait, I know who the bad guy is going to be, right? <laughs> Anyway, I still love them. And in fact, probably because of the nostalgia, I have continued to watch all of the remakes, the live action and all subsequent editions. And in fact, this is supposed to be the first installment in the Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe for this franchise. So it may be the nostalgia talking, but I was thoroughly entertained. Let me give you some quick tips for parents. There is a cute reference to the Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, which is extremely topical right now. Um, and you might need to explain to younger kids who that is. There are lots and lots of cultural and social references to things like Ikea, American Idol, DJ Khalid, Netflix, Tinder, hashtags, toxic masculinity, uh, a joke about Chris and Liam Hensworth even, and so many more. So they're probably gonna fly over the heads of really little kids, but the adults, like I said, will get a kick out of a lot of them. There are some jokes about an F-bomb and the D word that rhymes with Rick. Um, and this is the very first Scooby Dooby Doo film or Scooby film uh, to feature mild profanity. So there's a heads up for parents. Kids will learn a lot about Alexander the Great and that he really did have a pet dog named Paratus. Now, some themes that were taught in the movie are friendship, unity, greed, power, the power of pets accepting change. And then there's one line that Shaggy says, he's played by Will Forte, um, or is it Fort? Forte. Anyway, Shaggy says, people change, but that doesn't mean we have to grow apart. And that's the big theme of the movie is that change is okay. And again, that's very timely for this epic 
pandemic we've been experienced that has changed so much. Now, there were a lot of things that I really liked. And first of all, it's the talented voice actors. They include, as I mentioned, Will Forte, Mark Wahlberg, who's awesome, Jason Isaacs, Gina Rodriguez, whom I love, Zach Efron, big surprise, Amanda Seyfried, Kiersey Clemens, Ken Jeong, Tracy Morgan, Hen I met him in an airport once, Henry Winkler, and so many more. Uh, they're all new voices for the characters, except for Frank Welker, who is the legendary Scooby-Doo himself. And so I love that. This is actually the very first time since 1988 that Fred is not voiced by Frank Welker, but not to worry. He does play Scooby-Doo. Zac Efron lends his voice to the animated handsome teenager. And then can you believe this is Mark Wahlberg's first animated movie? I was surprised when I read that. I thought, wait a minute, surely he, ha no, nope, he hasn't. Anyway, he's great. Of course, I love him. And it's very appropriate that the very first installment of the new Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe deals with superheroes. It's like some people are saying that it's like the Avengers of Hanna-Barbera. And I don't know if I'd go that far, but there's definitely a superhero element to the movie that makes it a lot of fun. Now, I grew up in California, but can you believe I've never been to Venice Beach? I even lived in San Diego County in Carlsbad and never made it up there. Anyway, I thought the opening scene was really cute. It also circles back around to the closing scene and one of these days I have to go there. Now, there's a cute cartoon cameo of Simon Cowell. Um, yeah, you know, the Simon Cowell. He criticizes the teenagers and Fred breaks the fourth wall. The fourth wall is when a character talks to the audience. And so Fred breaks the fourth wall telling the audience he's mean, but he makes it fun. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. And then Shaggy says, he's not that smart, but sounds like it because he's British, which is so true. That's how Americans feel like. If you speak with a British accent, all of a sudden your IQ jumps in our estimation because you sound so intelligent. <laughs> Anyway, it's a cute scene, kind of random, but it propels the story forward and, and is important. Uh, there are some cute camera angles that are used in the animation, and you get to see the kids solve their very first mystery, which is what gets them hooked on the crime solving business. So it's fun to see the origin story. The movie really feels like it belongs in the Scooby-Doo franchise, which I was a little bit worried about, but it's full of zany capers, one-liners, fun characters, and so I thought it was great. There's plenty of humor for kids and adults, and there's an entertaining villain with some adorable robotic minions. Now, not exactly like you know, the despicable me minions, but I could see these ones taking off and being really popular. Now, if you're an old fan like me, there are lots of shout outs to the past that you'll really love. You'll see quite a few respectful nods to the pasts. For example, um, you see Shaggy standing in front of the Hannah Barber shop and Barbara Pizza Store for the Hanna-Barbera creators. Shaggy also stands in front of Casey's Creations to honor Casey Kasem, who is the actor who first voiced his character. Aw, I love that. The bowling alley is named Takamoto Bowl to honor Iwao Takamoto, Scooby-Doo's original designer. So that's so sweet. And look closely, there are even more of those kinds of things in the film. I love that. I also loved seeing the famous Acropolis in Greece in the movie. I finally got to go there and see it for the first time just a couple of years ago. It's epic and as gigantic as it shows in the film. I love kids' movies that introduce them to history and to travel, to give them ideas of things outside their house and neighborhood. And then during the final credits, you'll get to see some screenshots from the episodes that I used to watch long time ago as a little girl. So I thought that that was really fun. And again, another very respectful tribute to the past.
Now, there were only a few things that I didn't like. First of all, the voice of Shaggy as a young kid sounded way too much like a girl. So after I finished watching it, I looked it up to see who the voice actor was, and I was surprised it's actually voiced by a guy in Armitage, who's the young star of the popular TV show, Young Sheldon. I was surprised because I really like him. I thought I would have recognized his voice. Thankfully, the adult voice of Shaggy sounds like the Shaggy we all know and love, and Will Forte does a great job with him. Unfortunately, we don't get to see Scrappy-Doo in this film, so I'm assuming that he'll show up in the next installment in the Hanna-Barbera Cinematic Universe. And that was it, really. Other than that, you know, there's chaos and mayhem, but the film is very colorful, lots of action, fun things to see and do, lots of visual gags and humor that'll keep you entertained. So again, I really enjoyed it. There are some funny lines that I wrote on my written review at moviereviewmom.com. So you can go there to check those out. And then you can also check out the links that I have for other movies that I recommend, which are, of course, all of the other Scooby-Doo movies and even the DVD boxed set. Uh, and then because this is October, if you didn't know, there's a happy Halloween Scooby-Doo that you can see. And again, I'll put the links down below as well. All right, that's it for my review. Notice I'm covering up this cheek. <laughs> Seriously, I don't want you to see it. Anyway, I think that you'll get a kick out of this movie and I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.